Will imprinting on paper save trees so that they can be used for batteries? And can a robot jellyfish be the first perpetual machine ever? All this and more on Green Tech Weekly! <laughs> That's not how the song goes. <laughs>another show. Sorry we missed you the last two weeks. I've been really busy moving into my new house. This is show number 28. On today's show, the part of Jared will be played by his older brother, John luc Hello, world. This week, the tech gets weird. And that's different than every week. How? <laughs> In our first story, resident smart guy, Dr. Julian Allwood at the University of Cambridge, who coincidentally works with trees and paper, is leading the team that is making paper that can be unprinted. Unprinted? What's that mean? Billions of pieces of paper are printed each day. This new process uses lasers, lasers to remove the toner off the paper so it can be used over and over again. The experimental system can use the printout from a common laser jet printer and then another laser to vaporize the ink off the paper. They're still working out the emissions issue, and the next step is to build a prototype. That'll save a lot of paper. And trees. With <laughs> lasers. <laughs> Speaking of paper, cutting down trees to make it is the last thing I want to talk about is green tech. But this next story has found the use for the wasted biomass, or more specifically the lignin, to do some good. The lignin has electrochemically active molecules in it called quinones. Professor smart guy Ali Ignis at the Linkoping University in Sweden is going to try to use this lignin left over from the paper industry to make the cathode part of a battery by making it into a thin film. The plan is to develop an industrial process to use this on a larger scale and make batteries from the material that would otherwise go wasted in the paper making process. The very not green paper making process. Right! For our third story, the Swiss wanted to test the hydrogen fuel cell, so they decided to go with a street sweeper. A what? The normal looking sweeper is called the City Cat H2 and is part of a project to test the hydrogen powered vehicle in the real world. The Paul Scherer Institute, EMPA and a few other companies are running the test in the city of Basel. There were a few issues in the first test that ran in 2009 that they were able to work out. At this time the system is using fossil fuels to produce the hydrogen but even with that they were able to reduce the CO2 production by 40% with plans to switch to renewable energy sources. The biggest drawback they found was the engine didn't make enough heat to keep the driver warm, so they had to add heated seats. You should get those for your car. Yeah. The test in Basel has ended, and now they are moving on to the city of St. Gallen. In our fourth story, FedEx is going electric. Smith Electric and Utilimaster are ready to produce an all-electric walk-in delivery van. They call it the Newton Step Van, and it has a range of 100 miles on a single charge. The vans will use lithium ion batteries and they can handle a whopping 10,000 pounds at its largest configuration, making it ideal for shipping all sorts of things to us. I wonder what I could order that would weigh that much. The vans will have an onboard charger and regenerative charging. The cool part is that the Smith Power System can take batteries of any kind and use them. Great, now I know what to do with that box of double A's in the basement. The plan for the next few years is to roll out to select markets and even to other companies like Coke, Staples, and the U.S. Marine Corps. A recent discovery found that a certain jellyfish could live forever because it reverts back to its child form after having children of its own. Would this fish happen to be from the planet Orc? What's planet Orc? Well, when I was a kid, the researchers seemed to have made a robot version. Wait, wouldn't that be a perpetual motion machine? Yes. Won't that break the laws of physics and destroy the planet as we know it? I think we'll be safe for now, but it will further science. Virginia Tech calls it the Robo Jelly. Well, that's not a very imaginative name. At least it's not the RJ1. <laughs> it's friend C3PO, though. The power for this is the heat producing reaction catalyzed by its surface and using the hydrogen and oxygen in the water as fuel. The platinum based surface will generate the heat that's transferred to the artificial muscle, causing them to change shape, propelling it forward. The idea is to use them as an unmanned surveillance system. So then we can see the sharks with lasers on them before they come to get us. Okay. <laughs> 
In our last story, the electric car company Coda started to deliver its electric sedan to three California dealerships a few weeks ago. The first 500 cars had a commemorative plaque in the center of the dash and a custom keychain. The five passenger car has a range of 88 miles with its lithium iron phosphate batteries. The charge time is 6 hours from a 240 volt outlet. The car will cost a new owner just over $27,000 after rebates and you get a 10 year 100,000 mile warranty. Let's hope these batteries aren't as picky as the other electric cars that are out there right now. For now, they're only being sold out of California, but they plan to roll it out to the rest of the U.S. as production allows. Thanks for watching another show. Follow us all the usual ways on like Facebook and Twitter. Hit the like button and the subscribe button on this channel to help us out. And as always, cut! What? Whoa, what? We have to reshoot the whole show. Why? You forgot your tie. It's still in a box. Just remember to rethink it green. Rethink it green. Rethink it green. I'm gonna get you cans. Say, I'm gonna get you cans. I'm gonna get you cans. Sir, I hate litter. I hate litter. Recycle, don't litter. Recycle. Dang it. <laughs> All right, we have to do it again. What? Well, I was so active that one. Because if we destroy, if we cause a para paradox, it won't destroy the planet, it will destroy the universe. So it is officially my screw up. I wrote, what I, I said write? planet, not universe. Does it matter? I think so. 
<laughs> oh wait, after Scott. So you're talking about a theoretical sci-fi event that could never technically happen based on a jellyfish robot in the middle of the ocean. Daddy, I have Yes! I, have I think we're okay! I have something to say after Scott says his line. Well, his line's done, but anyway, yeah. go on. Apparently we've decided. Apparently we have decided we're not gonna redo it because just because <laughs> this we're not really gonna destroy oh, the universe. Yeah. It's a robo jellyfish. It's not the space time continuum. No, it, it, that is so that totally say, going on the front one. Won't that break the laws of physics and destroy the universe as we know it? And I could say, and won't that create a time paradox? Won't well, create a time paradox? What are you new? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm Actually, new. he is. <laughs> Technically, he is very new. <laughs> You're still recording. Well, yeah, I did.